and uh, call this meeting to order. Um, start with uh, some community announcements. Um, we do have the uh, big MIO festival this weekend at the Reed Center. It's a festival that's been growing every year. It's quite a quite an event, and uh, we're extremely proud of it. So, uh, I would certainly encourage you to uh, attend that. Um, Ms. Eads, you want to take the ball? Yes, Mayor. This Thursday, the 14th of June, is the Neighborhood Association Cookout at Joe Barnes Regional Park at the Rotary Pavilion starting at 5.30 to 7. There'll be free hot dogs and hamburgers celebrating the uh, contribution the Neighborhood Associations make to our community. And uh, bring your own drinks and come out and enjoy some uh, community uh, sharing and uh, some delicious food prepared by our uh, community action officers. And uh, my only other one was uh, Sunday is Father's Day, so note that on your calendars. That's all I have and for now. And it's your birthday, correct? Yes. Yeah, no. Correct. Sunday. I, I do want to take, uh, take a minute to recognize one of our staff uh, who I've known for a number of years. Um, and was my boss at the PD at one time. Uh, Phil Anderson's been our city attorney for the last uh, year and a half. He uh, has filled in uh, a crucial role. Uh, <laughs> the role of the city attorney for any city is vital so we don't get in trouble uh, and primarily to stay out of jail. And, and, uh, and Phil uh, has not only served this community for 20 plus years as a police officer, but then went into law practice uh, and then came back to service again. And, uh, and I don't think I'm stepping on any toes by saying this, Phil, but uh, first off, I appreciate your friendship. Even though I still remember some of those tunes outs I got over the PD, um, but we appreciate the service not only to the community but uh, coming back and, and serving us again. Uh, you've done us a very good job. Uh, we're gonna miss you. Uh, and uh, good luck with being a grandpa. Cause that's, <laughs> you, you, you've earned it and you deserve it. And again, thank you for being with us uh, for this time. And, uh, thank you for those comments, Mayor, I appreciate it. I believe the mayor kind of took it easy on Phil because I believe his uh, his nickname when he was uh, working at the at the police department was Darth Vader. <laughs> I was uh, I was trying to leave that out of the commentary, but uh, but I'll tell you the uh, the tunes out I got were well deserved. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> It's like you said, you can't be held responsible for what you did 15, 20 years ago, right? Uh -huh. Okay, with that being said, uh, I would like to, uh, any other further announcements by any of the horseshoe or anyone in the audience? Cruising for coffee is also Saturday, Mayor. Cruising for coffee is Saturday at Santa Fe Steakhouse uh, on 29th Street. That is getting to be quite the event. There's uh, folks coming in from all over the state to, to participate that. And basically it's just a classic car show for free. So if you're out for coffee, you're out at eight o'clock in the morning, want to see a bunch of good, when they made cars, uh, it's pretty cool to watch. Um, that being said, uh, I would ask you for st to stand uh, and ask Mr. Sullivan to uh, uh, do the invocation and uh, Councilman Bowen will lead us in the pledge. You bow with me, please. Almighty Heavenly Father, we're blessed to be uh, in your presence this evening, Father. We're, we're honored, Father, that uh, we're able to address you and ask you to uh, have your spirit be upon this meeting. Father, I ask uh, that your discernment and your wisdom be upon this council tonight, Father. They have difficult decisions before them. 
And Father, I ask that you give them peace and comfort in their decisions. I ask that their decisions be for the good of the whole. Father, we thank you so much for their service, their dedication, their family sacrifice while they're away. Father, we just thank you so much for this great city and that we live in, that we work and play and raise our families. We, we're blessed. We give you the glory and the honor for that. We have a great state and a great nation. We have people all over the world tonight, Lord, that are, that are defending this great nation, ensuring that, our, that we're free to meet like we're doing tonight. We ask your protection be upon them and Father, thank you for their sacrifice. Thank you so much for the sacrifice of your son Jesus, the blood that was shed on our behalf for the forgiveness of our sins. We ask all of this in his holy name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Uh, one thing I did leave out of, the, out, out of <laughs> Phil's history is the fact that uh, he is a veteran of the Vietnam era and uh, served in the United States Army prior to becoming a police officer. And again, thank you for your service on that, Phil. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll move into the consent agenda of our uh, program this evening. We do have a consent agenda. These items are placed on the consent agenda so that the council, by unanimous consent, can approve routine agenda items by one motion. If any item proposed does not meet with the approval of all the council or members of the audience wish to discuss an item, it will be removed and heard in regular order. Mayor and Council, we would request that you remove item C4. Item C4 be removed and the chair would entertain a motion. Motion to approve. The consent agenda. Motion to approve without C4. Without C4, correct. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Move into the discussion portion of our agenda. The first item is public hearing with discussion consideration of adopting a resolution approving the City of Midwest City, Oklahoma budget for 2018-2019 in the amount of ninety million three hundred forty one thousand eight hundred eighty dollars budget for this uh, this upcoming year is being submitted for your adoption there has been due diligence on the part of the council and administration to provide the attached budget message budget summary and resolution uh, we held two uh, working uh, budget meetings on May 3rd and May 24th with the City Council uh, and as required by state law, a public hearing will be held prior to adoption. Staff recommends approval of the budget uh, uh, be adopted by resolution at department level as discussed in the budget meetings with adjustments. Um, before we get into any questions that, that you might have on the budget, I wanted to express my appreciation to our finance department uh, headed by Christy Behrens, our finance director, uh, they do uh, do a wonderful job of uh, helping us work through all of the work uh, and all the worksheets and, and all the financial information that's, that's put together by the, the department heads. They too do a uh, great job in putting together and identifying their needs uh, and um, are always good stewards of the, uh, the taxpayers' money. Uh, and again, I'd like to thank uh, Tim Lyon, the assistant city manager, um, he, um, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get through this process without having uh, his assistance uh, uh, and uh, all the work that he puts in. So, I want to thank everybody for all of the the hard work that's been put in and putting this together. Mm -hmm. 
And ladies and gentlemen, I want, might want to add a couple of things. And we were uh, complimented last year by the citizen on our transparency on our budget. And our t entire budget is available on our website, and you can go line by line and look exactly what where your money's going. Uh, not a lot of municipalities do that, but uh, we pride ourselves in being just open and transparent in everything we do. And I can tr trust me on this one. Uh, we uh, we spend every penny uh, uh, to your benefit and, and to maintain the services our citizens are, have come accustomed to. And uh, and every one of us have sat through those budget I uh, meetings and uh, uh, and learned a lot. But uh, again, I want to thank Christy and her group. Our finance department is one of, is, is a rarity actually, because fifty percent of our personnel down there are CPAs. And that's unheard for, uh, heard of at a municipal level. So uh, that's the kind of diligence that they go through, and it's uh, greatly appreciated. So uh, with that being said, the chair would entertain a motion. Is there any public this discussion? Public I'm hearing. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Almost left you out, Mr. <laughs> Dawkins. I'm sorry. Uh, Craig Dawkins, uh, 721 Hunters Run in Midwest City. Um, I was one of those people that said that I enjoyed the transparency of the city and I wish more uh, governing agencies would follow that example. Um, a couple of, well, I guess it was a year ago, we had two studies that were done, one on police, one on fire, and they made recommendations and some of that was with regard to staffing. In looking at the next fiscal year requests, I would just like for you or someone to address um, how was the next fiscal year manpower requests correlated to the studies were they to what extent are these manpower requests working into the recommendations of the study and so on uh, yes I'd be happy to answer those questions for you um, the uh, we had two studies done one was by uh, for the police department it was prepared by a group named matrix and then the uh, fire department study was done by a group named ESCI. Um, the matrix study on behalf of the police department recommended uh, the addition of seven police officers, um, help me, six. six, six, okay, I thought seven, all right, um, six officers, and, and so the, and as part of the, the, um, the sales tax increase, what we did was to work out a plan as to how we felt like we could roll, add those additional police officers onto the force. So this year we will be adding three officers, three new officers, uh, and all of the, the bells and whistles that go along with, uh, with adding new police officers. Now, um, we're actually gonna go ahead and bring those new officers on at the end of June uh, that'll be a little bit ahead of time, but the reason we're doing that is in order to be able to get them into cleat so that they can go through that that requirement, meet that requirement, and that's um, 18 weeks. And, and um, then following cleat, they will go into an FTO program, with, which is a field training program, so uh, another three or four months associated with that. So. Hopefully around the first of the year, we will actually see those three new officers actually in the, in the vehicles uh, adding to the, to the workforce. And of course, the, those will be targeted towards and they will supplement the, um, uh, the, the swing shift patrol because that's where Matrix identified uh, that we had our, our greatest deficiency. Uh, as to ESCI, um, there were recommendations for three additional firefighters. Uh, th we are not adding any of those firefighters this year. Um, uh, as, as we uh, did with the police, we, in, in the fire department, we projected out when we felt like we could, could bring those additional firefighters on and they will, they will show up, not this fiscal year, but next fiscal year. So we're, we're uh, holding to the, the recommendations uh, from those studies and uh, uh, we are bringing back to the council on a quarterly basis 
uh, updates to the council as to the progress and implementation of those studies. And a lot of the administrative issues that were identified in both studies, Mr. Dawkins, have been corrected, and we're uh, we're moving down a path. And uh, and uh, we promised you that those studies would be implemented, and, and that's exactly what we plan to do. But thank you for that question; I appreciate it. With that being said, is there any further discussion on discussion item? Mayor, I move to approve the FY1819 proposed budget. I have a motion. Any further discussion? Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. And I want to thank the council for all of the extra time that you guys had to put in in uh, the extra extra meetings and all the review time that you had to put in on all those uh, all those budgets. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't think Tim. We didn't budget anything, <laughs> did we? <laughs> There's no overtime for the council. <laughs> oh, oh well. Okay. Second item is discussion consideration of approving an ordinance extending the corporate limits of the city of Midwest City, designating the areas of tracks included in such extension, establishing a zoning district for such extension, determining the majority owner of said extension has been give, given written consent to said extension, repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in co conflict herewith, providing that if any part or parts hereof are held invalid or ineffective, the remaining portions shall not be affected and declaring an emergency. Mr. Coleman. Your Honor, City Council. Uh, Title 11, Chapter 1, Article 21, Section 2105 of the Oklahoma State Statutes allows for at least three quarters of the registered voters and the owners of at least three quarters in value of the property in any territory adjacent or contiguous to the municipality to request annexation by signing and filing a petition with the governing body of the municipality. The petitioners must give notice of the presentation of the petition by publication at least once for two consecutive weeks in the newspaper of general circulation within the municipality where the petition has been presented. The municipality may pay for the cost of annexation proceedings after the notice of petition has been given, the governing body by ordinance may annex the territory to the municipality. Uh, Madam Clerk, it's my understanding that we have assisted them in the publication as required by state law. We have uh, received a petition from the owners of 1101 North Sooner Road to become part of our great city, and they are in the audience to answer any questions that you may have. After careful consideration, staff is recommending uh, a approval of this ordinance and enacting the emergency clause that's attached to the ordinance. Any questions of the uh, applicant? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Coleman. Welcome, sir. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion to approve. First, a motion to approve, sure. Mayor. I have a motion. Uh, do I have a second? I second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Chair, to entertain a motion declaring an emergency on this particular item. Second, motion to implement on an emergency basis. I have a motion, and Ms. Allen, did you second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you guys for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, next item. This is discussion consideration of taking action on a resolution authorizing the calling and holding of an election in the city of Midwest City, state of, o state of Oklahoma, for one, the purpose of submitting to the registered qualified electors of the city for the question of the issuance of the general obligation bonds of said city in the sum of $15,965,000 to be issued in series to provide funds either with or without state or federal aid for the purpose of constructing, reconstructing, improving, and repairing streets within said city is authorized by Section 27, Article 10 of the Constitution and Statutes of the State of Oklahoma and acts complementary, supplementary, and enacted pursuant thereto. And for two, the purpose of submitting to the registered qualified electors of said city the question of the issuance of the general obligation bonds of said city in some 
in sum of $5,560,000 to be issued in series to provide funds either with or without state or federal aid for the purpose of acquiring, constructing, reconstructing, extending, enlarging, improving, and repairing the municipal water system within said city to be owned exclu exclusively by said city as authorized by Section 27, Article 10 of the Constitution and statutes of the State of Oklahoma and acts complementary, supplementary, and enacted pursuant thereto. And for three, the purpose of submitting to the registered qualified electors of said city the question of the issuance of the general obligation bonds of said city in the amount of $21,635,000 to be issued in series to provide funds either with or without state or federal aid for the purpose of purchasing, constructing, equipping, improving, extending, renovating, repairing, and beautifying public parks and parklands, cultural and recreational facilities, all to be owned exclusively by said city as authorized by Section 27, Article 10 of the Constitution and Statutes of the State of Oklahoma, enacts complementary, supplementary, and enacted pursuant thereto. And for, for the purpose of submitting to the registered qualified electors of said city the question of the issuance of the general obligation bonds of said city in, in sum of $10,490,000 to be issued in series to provide funds either with or without state or federal aid for the purpose of acquiring, constructing, reconstructing, improving, remodeling, repairing public safety buildings and facilities and acquiring necessary lands there for and purchasing and installing public equipment to be owned exclusively by said city as authorized by Section 27, Article 10 of the Constitution and Statutes of the State of Oklahoma and acts complementary, supplementary, and enacted pursuant thereto. And in connection with each of said bonds, the question of levying and collecting an annual tax in addition to all other taxes upon all the taxable property in said city for the payment of the interest and principal on said bonds. Okay. No, I'll, I'll let you talk for a second while I catch my breath. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, this is a huge uh, deal for the city of Midwest City. It's one of the largest bond issues that we've ever gone for. But as I've said in public, and I'll continue to say it, a city without a vision will die. And we need to continue to be pressing forward to bring the amenities to our community that attract new people. And this is not a wish list or just a, uh, a list of things we want to do. These are things that we have to do to continue to compete with the surrounding communities. Right now our youth athletic facilities are substandard. Uh, we've got communities to our east, south, and north that have built world-class facilities. We need to do that. Uh, we need some infrastructure improvements. And uh, a common term throughout this discussion has been, what's the most important street in Midwest City? The one in front of your house. And a lot of this, the 15 million that is allotted for street improvements is residential, not, not uh, the arterials. <coughs> and it's badly needed. So. Uh, we will be coming to the uh, taxpayers uh, for uh, and requesting this be uh, approved in uh, August uh, uh, by the vote of the people. And again, it's it's one of those things that we don't like doing, but if we can, we need to continue to move forward and have a vision for this community as those who have served us before uh, did. Uh, and. Uh, bring our community back up to the level that it deserves and uh, has been for a number of years. So with that being said, any other further comments from the horse? Or yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, in, uh, in not to diminish any of the four propositions, but there's one that I want to I wanna talk to right now, and that's the one, the first one I want to talk to is the one on the parks. And I can't agree with you more that we really need to do something to help our quality of life in Midwest City and the money that's going to be spent on these projects will. One of the issues that came up in the town hall meetings was uh, what we were going to do to make sure that there was more green space for the people in, in the city, especially since 
uh, most of the recreation facilities now are fenced off and there isn't there isn't easy access for people for kids that want to go play baseball or throw a football around the park right now we're, we're limited for that space one of the things that is in this proposal is a uh, is an animal shelter that's in a different proposition but if this if that proposition four is approved it works with proposition three which is the parks and I'd like Mr. Sullivan to address us on what the plans are if for instance the, this passes there's an opportunity in this to not only have a police and fire <coughs> training facility in what is now basically a locked park but the ability to open that up is going to come to fruition and also with the if the 29th street passes what will happen to regional park if you could address those because those are sure. some of the questions sure be glad to uh mayor and council uh, a lot of moving parts here as you know uh but for the sake of this discussion we'll say that uh, the voters are kind to us and uh approve all these bond issues. Uh, the multi-purpose <coughs> sports complex, let's start with that over on 29th. Uh, we would intend to uh, play a number of our adult and youth uh, sports at that facility. Uh, that is a multi-purpose facility that could be used to play anything from uh, the, the youngest ages of baseball and softball uh, all the way up to adult softball, including uh, micro soccer, little league football, uh, and uh, adult softball. Having said that, uh, the intent would be to move our, permanently move our Little League football program there and move our adult softball program there. That would uh, significantly uh, improve uh, our situation. Our softball complex here in Regional Park is in need of some serious capital improvement uh, to stay up with today's standards. It would also provide us with one extra field so that we could host uh, some larger tournaments, adult softball tournaments. And uh, that, we would uh, intend to take that space in Regional Park and open that up and use it uh, as open green space, um, hopefully develop some uh, good quality practice areas uh, and open fields where you could do anything from uh, uh, let, let your, uh, your canine chase a Frisbee to uh, have a little league micro soccer practice if you'd like to. So that would give us some additional open space. Regional Park is heavily programmed right now, as you well know, uh, and it needs more open space. Uh, in addition to that, uh, with the renovation of Reed and with the construction of the multi-purpose sports complex, uh, we believe with those with a renovation of Reed and the additional fields and their multi-purpose uh, capacity at the new facility, we can run all of our baseball, including some significant little league tournaments out of both those facilities and uh, that would give us the ability to um, uh, abandon, uh, abandon is not a very good word, but get, give us the ability to no longer require the little league fields in Civic Park, which Ms. Transcend have been there since, the, some of them since the 60s. Mayor, you? Um, okay, 70s. Uh, th those are in serious need of updating and repair. Lighting is deficient, bathrooms are deficient, uh, concession facilities. It would be our intent uh, once uh, public safety has use of the, the parking lot and uh, some of the programming on that side of the creek, it would be our intent to make that open green space as well. Uh, possibly have some nice high quality areas for teams to practice. Uh, and uh, do a number of open recreating types of things uh, and uh, remove some of the existing facilities that are now there. We would need to continue to use that facility until Reed is renovated and the new multi-purpose facility uh, is constructed and completed. So it wouldn't happen right away. We are significantly under acred in this city uh, with open green space and that would be our intent at this time to make it that. And even though this is a significant bill to pay for that multi sports facility, the economic impact I'm sure would be be very good for Midwest City. Be, you know, it goes back to the old saying, "If you build it, they're going to come, and they're going to come spend money." 
Yes, sir. Um, the fact that it's fully synthetic, state-of-the-art lighting, uh, you can play on it every day of the week, night and day. You can convert it. Our intent would be to build a facility that can be can converted from sport, from age group to age group, sport to sport, very quickly. Uh, and you would see activity there. Uh, our hope would be seven days a week at some point. Uh, and uh, it also be something that would bring folks into town from all over this region uh, to recreate, play, play ball games there of all ages. Yes, sir, that's, that's correct. I have no data to back this up, but I would also hope that just the improvement uh, to that area of our, uh, of our town would spur additional economic development as well in that area. Uh, which is, as you know, uh, it's a big deal. Needed desperately in that part of town. So, yes, sir. Thank you. Any more questions? Any further discussion? Mayor, I might just add that um, we did hold two uh, two public meetings uh, to go over the uh, proposed propositions. Uh, I, they were well attended and uh, had some good good comments that that came from those meetings. Uh, one of those had to do with uh, the animal shelter and where is it gonna go. Uh, we, have, uh, we have landed on a location, uh, would be at the uh, northwest corner of Woodside and, and Reno Avenue, uh, not exactly across the, 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 the street from the dog park, but uh, certainly in, in, uh, in barkable territory. Um, so, um, um, and those are those projects are, are identified uh, as to location, and um, um, I think the other one of the other takeaways had to do with what Councilman Byrne was talking about, and that is, you know, where what are you going to do with with Fred Myers, and and how is that all going to work out? And so, uh, we believe that we've identified um, uh, to the to the extent that we can. How, um, how this will play out over a, a long period of time. Um, it is our, our hope and goal uh, to, to keep the millage rate under 10 mils. And, and uh, to that extent, um, Mr. Nito, would you come down for a second and talk a little bit about to the public uh, about how we would um, um, uh, frame this uh, uh, this bond issue and and how it will relate to our millage rates and then maybe talk a little bit maybe you might want to start off talking about our assessed valuation okay. since we've got that up on the screen right now okay thank you guy and council people council person whatever's correct these days but uh, I'm Greg Nito and I'm the one that's assisted in structuring this and we've had a lot of lengthy discussions and one of the key aspects of it was for the for the millage rate for Midwest City sinking fund to be at 10 mils or less. And on the this display, we presented a little bit of history of what we've done in the past over since 2006 and seven. Our millage then was 9.25. Now that doesn't include school, colleges, or anything else. That's just for the sinking fund millage of the city of Midwest City to pay off the bonds. We had some bond issues outstanding. As you can see on the display, that goes down over time. It's just the nature of the beast. And two things, it goes down on its natural attrition in the way they pay off. And then also, if you look at the other part of the chart, 2006, 2007, our net assessed valuation or taxable value was 230 million. Since that time, it's increased to 330 million. That increases the tax base, the taxing property value of the, of the assessment for the bonds. It spreads it out over a lar much larger uh, tax base. So we anticipate that that will continue to grow over time as it has in the past. And these bonds, if they're issued, we cap them at 10 mils, and they will continue to decline over the 25-year life. Now, a couple of different parts of it, though. Um, to keep it at 10 mils, we're going to plan on issuing, if all the bonds carry, we're going to issue these bonds in series. We're not going to issue the entire amount all at once. We're going to issue them, break them up in particular fiscal years. That's going to keep the levy at 10 mils for the first few years, and then it will start to decline over the life of the issue. But that was a keynote aspect of putting this program together. In doing so, the council will probably, if they all pass, will come back and ask them to prioritize. 
what they need the money for first. And we'll issue those probably around 30 to $32 million the first year, and then the balance over the next couple of years to keep it at that 10 mils. Now, all kinds of variables, variables come into play. If interest rates start to spike, then we may come back and say, look, you know, I did a quick calculation. A quarter of a percent over 25 years would equate to about a million, not $1.9 million in interest, just in interest. If they start to take off, we may come back and say, I know we said 10 mils. Obviously, that would be a council decision, but to save that kind of money, do you want to risk going over it maybe a little bit and then, and then come back down? But those are things that we, we will address once we find out the amount of issues that pass and where interest rates are at the time. So that is what we have in mind. It's a long-term plan. We'll also have the ability to pay these bonds off early. Now, it's not like a, a revenue bond where if we have increased sales tax, but if valuations continue to go up and interest rates stabilize or go down, we'll be able to, you know, in 10 or maybe 12 years, shorten it to where we save money. And it doesn't, uh, you know, we don't get money back like in some refinancings, but we would take the millage maybe back up a little bit, but save interest over the long term. So does that answer, guys, or any? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Greg. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Nito. Yes, sir. With that said, any further discussion on this discussion item? Chair, to entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the calling of election for the general obligation bond. I have a motion. I have a second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this item? Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We move into our last discussion item. This is discussion consideration of an update concerning residential complaints against the developer of Turtlewood regarding needed repairs to a retaining wall supporting their backyards in the area of the Eastern Detention Pond. Mr. Anderson.
from Ms. Manderson. Uh, Ms. Fetters, you signed up to come and, and uh, address council. Thank you. I've spoken to, oh, my name is Kathy Fetters, 2430 uh, Turtlewood River Road. Um, thank you for your time. I've yes, spoken to several of you and sent emails. Oh, thank you. Like I need to be here. <coughs> um, just to back up here, let me just, for those that didn't go out and look at the wall, the original wall was built with the wood ties like this. Okay, so they intersected. So each section of the wall relied on the next section and the prior section for the integrity of the wall. Okay, so last year, a large section, about 50 feet, exploded, just failed. Um, home creations came in and built a new wall, but they sliced down that wall so the new wall is not connected in any way to the prior wall, which to me means this is a new wall. It is not connected to the old wall. Now, the frames that we had, keep in mind this was done in the fall less than a year ago. The rains that we just had on Thursday, that new section of wall, the timbers came out because they're not attached to anything. And the ground came out from underneath of it and that wall was failing again. So our question is, was a permit given to do that section of wall? Was it inspected? Why was it not built according to the current code, which is concrete block it's over two feet tall we don't understand why the city allowed that to be done At the time we were inquiring last year into the wall, uh, the field inspectors went out, looked at it, and, and felt that there was more of a maintenance issue than to remove the wall and repair it. The city attorney was consulted at the time, and she got, I should say guy, she uh, advised us that the work that was done on the wall was a maintenance repair it was not a new wall that was being built it was simply repairing part of a wall that was already there so no new permit was necessary for them to do that uh, home creations decided to move forward under that advisement and they went out and restacked the timbers as necessary uh, to put the wall back in place so even though it's not connected to the prior wall it's considered part of that wall Yes, it was part of the wall, you know, the 700 foot of wall, there was part of it that did come apart and they went out and reconstructed it in place. And it was considered part of that maintenance of the wall that's out there right now. Okay, so I'm still confused because the city code says that any walls that have been, that are going to be built, and this was a it was being, even if it was a repair, it should have been done in concrete. I don't understand why the code did not apply. Well, uh, again, uh, the field inspectors spoke with the city attorney of the time. Uh, she felt that as a repair, it didn't need to be brought up to code. It just needed to simply match what was in the field there on site, and it was reconstructed with the materials that were already in place. So, um, so it, following along in line with that, I worked in healthcare, and the American with Disabilities Act said that any time you did remodels to current buildings, they had to comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act. So this was a repair remodel to the wall. I don't understand why, just because it was a repair, it didn't have to meet city code. Are you telling me that current buildings that go in and do new construct, that do remodel and repair in their buildings, you don't go in and inspect to make sure that they meet current city codes? Well, it, it's to a point. Uh, there's always different degrees of repair or replacement of 
any facility, we have certain thresholds that they have to meet when you renovate a house. It had to come up to code, but there's smaller repairs that can be done to existing conditions. And the city attorney advised us at the time that that's what this case was. So there's a, I've got an old building off of Air Depot built somewhere in the 40s. It's a warren when you walk in there, because if we remodel, we have to go through existing new codes and everything else. But a leak, a wall that needs to be repaired, not replaced, it doesn't have to then be brought up to any of the ADA standards, because I'm not remodeling, I'm replacing it. What I'm hearing you say, Patrick, is regardless of, and I, and I understand where you're coming from, this was a repair, and as such, no permits needed to be pulled or were required, and since it was repair, it could be built back to this existing structure the way it was. Is that correct? Yes, Councilman. So no permit was issued? What none was required. Okay. But your statement said to go back to its, its original condition, and it was not, did okay. not do that. I, yeah. I am not somebody that minces words. And if I said original, don't take it to mean that okay. it needs to be put back exactly because I, I'm not a uh, engineer. I'm not smart enough to be an engineer. Um, but it was it was a repair, and a repair doesn't require a permit. If it did, if you had a tornado that came through and blew a panel of your fence down, you'd have to have a repair to replace it. We don't do rep we don't do permitting for m almost any repairs in the city, do we? No, sir. And, and, we, and truthfully, as bad as this is, I don't want to go down the road where all of a sudden, if you have a slat that comes out of your fence, you have to come down and get this gentleman to give you a permit. And this is a much bigger version of it. I have to agree with Phil at this point. This is an issue between, unfortunately, you guys and your council and him and his council. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Ms. Feathers, thank you for being here, and we will continue to monitor that situation out there, and if there's any interaction that is going to be allowed by law, by this council or by the city, we will take it, and, uh, and uh, I know it's frustrating. I know it's frustrating. I've been in the same situation that you're in right now, and, uh, it, but it has to be worked through, and uh, you together as a group of homeowners have a loud voice and uh, um, and can get stuff done, but it's going to be through a civil recourse rather than through a government recourse. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time, ma'am. I you. appreciate it. No action is needed for that particular item. Is there? Uh, we move into the new business public discussion of our agenda. Is there any new business or public discussion anyone wants to bring forth? Hearing none, we are hereby adjourned. I call to order the Midwest City Municipal Authority. We do have a consent agenda. These items are placed on the consent agenda so that the trustees by unanimous consent can approve routine agenda items by one motion. If any item proposed does not meet with the approval of all the trustees or members of the audience wish to discuss an item that be removed and heard in regular order. Chair, to entertain a motion. Motion is to pass consent Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the consent agenda? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstention. The motion carries. We have two discussion items. Go ahead. First item is public hearing with discussion consideration of adopting a resolution of Midwest City Municipal Authority approving. It's budget for fiscal year 2018-2019 in the amount of $45,720,720 in, in uh, $720,153. Same comments uh, that uh, uh, were presented on the uh, uh, general budget, general fund budget. Uh, we've had several budget sessions with the city council and um, staff recommends approval. This is public hearing. Public hearing, anyone having any comment on this discussion item? 
Hearing none, the chair would entertain a motion. Motion to approve. A second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Next discussion item. This is discussion consideration of awarding the bid and entering into a contract for, for landfill disposal services with Waste Management of Oklahoma, Inc. You have uh, the uh, recommendation from uh, staff regarding the, uh, uh, this particular bid. Uh, I know that we have uh, representatives from Republic, uh, Republic, excuse me, uh, in the audience. Uh, and uh, I did provide the council a um, copy of a letter that I think they would like to discuss with the council. So. Um, Ms. Bennett from Republic Service. And uh, I'm not going to try to put your name in public. <laughs> I apologize. It's a tough one. So, uh, Mayor, Council, thank you for letting us, giving us this opportunity to come and speak with you. I mean, I know you can see we've got several people here. Several of the people that are with us are actually residents that work for us are residents here, and they have a vested interest in, in what we're going to talk about. You know, uh, we, I told uh, Mr. Henson this afternoon, I mean, we, we value our relationship with the city. I know I've told you all that before. When we did this proposal, we looked at it long term, and we really think after we did the numbers and looked at it, and I know that we've given you some of the numbers, we personally feel that long term that we are the best solution, that we are the most cost effective solution by giving a percentage of the high BTU, the energy gas to energy plant, not only gives you like a percentage of, of what you bring in and the volume you bring in, but it also gives you a share in knowing that you're turning gas to energy, I mean, for your city. Um, we also rebated, I don't want to say rebate, but we will also reduce the recycling 20 cents, which equated to almost $50,000. And plus, just, just being the lower cost, I know that, you know, that waste management is as close as we are. I mean, they are close, but we are too, and we just think that with, with everything that we're giving in the long run, I know right now that they may be direct hauling their their trucks, but in the long run, if they're not gonna direct haul in the long run, you're just managing for the short term. And we, our whole purpose tonight is maybe just do a deeper dive into this and take a look at really what the cost savings would be. Yeah, I think just to reiterate Crystal's point, I think for us, you know, we do, we did a lot of work from a financial uh, analysis standpoint to say, you know, what, what is the, the, the great long-term solution for Midwest City? And we value the partnership with you guys. And we feel like it's, it's our responsibility to, to really put our best foot forward in that partnership. And, and even though maybe there's some short-term, uh, you know, maybe some gains there, you know, we feel like over the long haul, we are the most cost-effective. Um, and, and we do appreciate that, that relationship with you guys. And so again, our ask would be, you know, can, can you guys take a deeper dive into the proposals to really see what, what would benefit Midwest City for the long haul? Okay, thank you. Paul? Thank you, Mayor and Council, for the opportunity to talk about it. But first, I want to thank Republic Services. Thank you, Crystal, Jay, and the rest of the staff that are here to represent them. Their relationship and the service they provide for our recycling contract and compactor uh, contract is absolutely in incredible. We appreciate that relationship, and I appreciate your and value your time and energy spent here and obviously the letter to the Council. Um, what I'll tell you, Mayor and Council, is that staff did take into consideration what you're looking at in the letter, uh, the savings that they presented with respect to the, the rebate for recycling and for the gas uh, check that we're going to get for our trash that we take them, are both included in our calculations. They are 100% they are correct. What they provided you in the letter is something they provided in their proposal. Uh, we, we did look into that and considered it, obviously, when we made the recommendation to award it to waste management. Unfortunately, the distance round trip to southeast is about 20 miles from our transfer station. Um, and that route is taking Douglas Boulevard, which is, is the quickest route. Um, the distance to East Oak is actually 13 miles. Uh, and that distance 
when you start figuring the cost of transportation, time, and labor, um, there's a pretty significant savings realized over the course of a year. Uh, in fact, um, just considering the transportation costs along with the actual cost for tipping fees, we save about $40,000 a year to go to waste management, even with the rebates and checks that we would get from Republic if we had selected them as our contractor. So, so staff obviously had to take that into consideration because ultimately, who pays that cost? Well, that cost is going to be passed on to customers, and we have to be we have to be conscientious about the way that we spend money. It's very important to us. Um, we also, uh, when we looked into this uh, and compared the three contracts, we did look at turnaround time as well at the landfill. We didn't necessarily do it with our eyes shut. We looked at every possible thing that could possibly delay or create some cost for our department. And ultimately, not only did the, the distance save us a little money, but the built-in 3% escalator that's in the re RFP from Republic is double what the, the average CPI is over a five-year term. Our, our average CPI over five years has been about 1.5%. Um, and so when you factor that in along with the 3% against the 3% escalator from Republic Services, there's an additional savings to be realized over the course of the five-year contract. So that is why staff made the recommendation to go ahead and, and uh, enter into a contract with waste management for our landfill disposal. Are there any questions? So the total, total savings to the city over per year, according to what you just said, is $40,000 per year. At a minimum, the first year is $40,000. Subsequent years, that number gets bigger because the built-in escalator with Republic Services and then any kind of cost or labor for labor and fuel, et cetera, and the transportation. So at a minimum, it's $40,000 in the first year even taking into account the, the check and the rebate that we would get with, for the recycling contract and the, the gas. And the length of this contract is five years. Yes, right? sir. Paul, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, so looking at the bid tab sheet that we are provided, so the part that I'm now not following is on the bid amount from waste management, the resident landfill drop-off used, it says to be negotiated in the contract. So is that an additional cost or did you all give some kind of estimate for that and what you did to compare to determine that there would be a, a $40,000 minimum savings per year between the waste management bid and the Republic bid. So what that cost, the $40,000 uh, savings that I'm talking about, has nothing to do with the money that we may or may not have to pay related to services provided on a Saturday. That's only if, the only way that would ever be exercised, Susan, it's a great eye for the detail, the reality is the only way that would ever be exercised is if we chose to close the transfer station on Saturdays. Then we would have a need to, to, to be able to have some place to go or send residents to if we could not provide that service locally. So our expectation was that if we included it in the contract, it gave us another a backup solution, uh, if you will, in case we ever chose to close the transfer station on That's Saturdays. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. No, absolutely. So trust me, I trust you completely, but she did ask for open dialogue. So do you have anything you'd like to say to the members that he just – Step up. The only reason I'm step, asking you to step to the mic is we're on TV, so okay. turn around, smile, and wave. Okay, um, we want the people at home to hear. Perfect. And our only question is, and, and I'm sure Paul can probably answer this, we, did, we are anticipating that you are not going to close your transfer station, that it, you're going to keep it open, that just right now that, that you're going to direct haul for a short time, which I see for a short time that it would be beneficial. I totally see that. But we were looking long term. I mean, number one, and, and I know Paul knows this, but transfer, I mean, I have cities now more and other cities that are wanting to open transfer stations because of tires and because of the maintenance work and everything that is associated with, with going, hauling directly. So if it was, if it's not always going to be a direct haul, that's why we were just saying maybe a deeper dive and look into it for five years. Are you going to always direct haul for the next five years? Because if not, then we think that we would be the better option. So let me speak to that. The, the actual, well actually, the numbers I quoted you had nothing to do with direct haul. The $40,000 savings is if we continue to run our transfer station and transfer trucks Monday through Friday. 
We have evaluated uh, doing direct haul because of personnel and obviously costs associated with the services that are being provided. Um, and I can tell you that, that for us, there is a pretty significant savings if we choose to direct haul, which would actually complement the $40,000 we're already saying that we're gonna save in the first year. So it has, I'm not putting direct haul on the table. I wanted to do an apples to apples comparison using the existing transfer station, trucks, personnel, and, and doing the same things we're doing now, just changing our destination for the trucks that are loaded with trash. Let me ask you a, a question, Crystal. I, I'm kind of a proponent of you know, keeping the norm and not stepping out of that. But it, will this, if we, uh, this will not uh, adversely affect our relationship with Republic? Absolutely not. I will tell you right now, I think the world of Paul Streets and Vaughn, I mean, and Matt Faulkner, I absolutely have a great relationship with them. So absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, I, I value that relationship. I can tell you that this man is one of the most upstanding, I think I told you this last time, he's one of the most upstanding, nicest human beings I've ever met in my life. I mean, so no, we, I, we will continue to have a wonderful relationship. Well, and, and again, we, we challenge all of our department heads to, to be prudent with taxpayers' money. Uh, this is a, a significant savings across a period of five years. This, I've also learned uh, windows of opportunity are open sometimes. So with this, this could be another window of opportunity for Republic to maybe look at the proposals and, and uh, come back with maybe some additional savings that would be beneficial, not only for you, but also for the city of Midwest City. So. Uh, Again, we appreciate the relationship. You're a good community a partner, uh, and we appreciate that. And uh, thank you for your time for being here. Yes, thank so, you, Council, for listening to us. You bet. So that being said, any further discussion on this item? Hearing none, Chair would entertain a motion. A motion to approve. There's a motion to approve the, uh, the bid as, pre as uh, presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Motion carries. We move into the new business public discussion of our agenda. Uh, is there anything that the uh, audience would like to bring before the Midwest City Municipal Authority? Hearing none, we are hereby adjourned. We thank you, Republic, for being here. We yes, appreciate it. Thank you. I call to order the Midwest City Memorial Hospital Authority. We have three discussion items. First item is discussion consider consideration of approving the minutes of the staff briefing and regular meeting of May 22nd, 2018, as submitted. Move to approve. I I second. Motion. And I have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Next item. Item two, discussion consideration of action to reallocate assets, change fund managers, or make changes in the statement of investment policy guidelines and objectives. No action is necessary on this. And item three is public hearing with discussion consideration of adopting a resolution of the city of the Midwest City Memorial Hospital Authority approving its budget for fiscal year 2018-2019 in the amount of $1,940,142 for discretionary fund, $1,779,950 for compounded principal, and $60,588 for hospital expansion loan reserve, and $3,091,029 for in lieu of, in lieu of ROR slash miscellaneous divisions. Staff would recommend approval of the proposed budget. Move to approve. I have Proposal. a motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. 
New business public discussion. Is there anything that uh, the audience would like to bring before the Midwest City Memorial Hospital Authority? Hearing none, we do have uh, two executive sessions. We will uh, not need the second executive session item, but uh, the first item I'll read. Discussion consideration of one entering into executive session as allowed under 25 OS section 307 B3 to discuss the purchase or appraisal of real property and to an open session authorizing the general manager administrator to take action as appropriate based upon the discussion in executive session. I'm going to have to correct a parliamentary procedure ladies and gentlemen on item three that was a public hearing for the adoption of the resolution was there anyone in the public that wanted to discuss that particular item? Hearing none, the motion, the second, and the vote still carries. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for that oversight. Uh, the chair would entertain a motion to uh, go into executive session. Move to adjourn to executive session. I have second. a motion. I have a second. Second. Okay. Speak into the mic. Second. Thank you. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We are hereby in executive session.
Out of the executive session, the chair to entertain a motion. Motion. Second. Got a motion to authorize. I'm second. Mr. Coleman to move forward. I've got a second. All in favor, indicate saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Public, uh, new business, public discussion. Anybody have anything to bring for utilities? No. Stand by. We're at the hospital authority. We are hereby adjourned. I call to order the Midwest City Utilities Authority. We uh, have two economic, discussion economic development authority. Uh, okay. I call to order the economic development authority. We have two discussion items. First item is discussion consideration of approving the minutes of the staff briefing and special meeting of February, February 27th, 2018. Move to approve. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Second item. Public hearing with discussion consideration of adopting a resolution of the Midwest City Economic Development Authority approving its budget for fiscal year. 2018-2019 in the amount of $895,282. This is public hearing. Uh, since there's no public here, um, the chair to entertain a motion. Move motion to, to approve. approve. <laughs> Sorry. All in favor, indicate for saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention, motion carries. We do have an executive session. This is. Yes. Yes. New business. This, this is discussion and consideration of one uh, entering into executive session as allowed under 25 OS section 307C10 to confer on matters pertaining to economic development, including the transfer of property, financing, or the creation of a proposal to entice a business to remain or to locate within the city into an open session authorizing the general manager slash administrator to take action as appropriate based upon the discussion in executive session. Move uh, to adjourn to executive session. Uh, I would like, don't we have a utilities attorney? We do. I would like to uh, go ahead and have us recess from the uh, Economic Development Authority and then call to order the Midwest City Utilities Authority. And we have two discussion items on that agenda. Okay, we need a motion to recess. We have a motion to recess. Move to recess. Second. All in favor, indicate for saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstention. Motion carries. I now call to order the Midwest State Utilities Authority agenda. We Two discussion items. First item is discussion consideration of approving the minutes of the staff briefing and special meetings of April 24, 2018, and May 3, 2018. Move submitted. to approve. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. Any other discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Second item. Public hearing with discussion consideration of adopting a resolution of the Midwest City Utilities Authority approving its budget for fiscal year 2018-2019 in the amount of $220,200. Chair to entertain a motion. Motion to approve. approve. I have a motion. I have a second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Extension. New business public discussion. There are none. We are hereby adjourned. Uh, I need a motion to come out of uh, recess on the Economic Development Authority and go into executive session. Mm. All in favor, any keep saying aye. Opposed. Extension. We are in executive session.